SpaceX's mysterious regulatory filing. Let's go check it out. the channel thank you so much once again joining me for tea time today we have a little bit of fireside so good so good love that smokiness of the lap song hope you're joining me with your cup of tea maybe a cup of coffee hanging out talking tech talking photo talking video today is a technology day very interesting this mysterious thing happened just this week actually towards the end of last week and i was reading through it and i said you know what i'm not going to do this story because it sounds so far-fetched I just don't want to do it. I want to make sure that this is real because it just didn't sound real. They were talking about like SpaceX and requesting radio frequency from the kingdom of Tonga. What the frick is that? <laughs> it just sounded literally not plausible. I said, you know, this is not, I, I don't want to put out there just fake news. There's so much of that already. Anyways, I read through this a bit more and I looked at a bunch of different sites and they were all talking about the same thing. So this actually did happen. So I wanna bring this to your attention and then talk about what is the implications of this? What does it mean, right? And the idea here was that SpaceX submitted a request basically for additional radio spectrum, additional frequency. And I read this at PC Magazine, at like T2 Space and a bunch of different sites. So I wanna go through this, read it to you and then give you my commentary on it. And I wanna, of course, hear from you. What do you think this means moving forward? So. We'll get into some drawing. Maybe I'll pick up my pen, draw some pretty pictures or do something. I don't know, give you some more information like that. Anyways, before we get into this, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. They are free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just enjoy this even the least, throw the video a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Tell your friends, family, colleagues, tell all your friends to come and check out the channel and subscribe. We're trying to build these numbers up. We're getting close to that 100,000 mark. Eh. Only 20 some thousand left, but that's okay. It'll come quick enough. Tell your friends about it. Also, if you want more Starlink content, just specifically Starlink, I'll put a playlist over here so you can go and check it out after watching this video. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there'll be a little button down here. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Finally, if you're looking for a VPN, go check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is J Christina. You'll get 15% off by using that promo code, or even easier, just go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. So guys, let's get right into this. I'm gonna get into this article first, and then once again, I will get into some commentary, and then finally, I wanna hear from you, as we always do, because this channel is all about you, not me, some talking head here, right? So anyways, this article starts out by saying, SpaceX has submitted a mysterious regulatory filing for 29,888 satellites in a bid to secure additional radio spectrum and upgrade its Starlink network. Now, if you don't know, radio spectrum basically refers to a range of electromagnetic frequencies that are used for wireless communications. So they want an additional block, let's say, of spectrum. And I'll get into that a little bit more detail in just a second. So. It continues by saying, the filing was made to the International Telecommunication Union, or the ITU, which oversees radio frequency allocation for satellite providers. While the submission initially appeared to come from the Kingdom of Tonga, the ITU confirmed that SpaceX is behind it. The filing covers 29,888 satellites positioned across 288 orbital planes at altitudes ranging between 350 and 614 kilometers. That's very interesting. 350 and 614 kilometers. Right now, SpaceX is using right around, let's call it 550 kilometers is where most of their satellites lay. So. 350, that means we're going to see, like I speculated a long time ago, we're gonna see some of these faster satellites lower in orbit. 
There's a lot of implications to that. Faster speeds, lower latency, but more drag, so they're not gonna be able to be there for the five years, six years, as the other ones will, in my personal opinion. So they're gonna have to renew these, let's say, a lot. Anyways, we'll get into that in another video. The article continues by saying, it is unclear whether the filing is for additional satellites or for frequency. SpaceX filed a similar report in 2019 for 30,000 Starlink satellites. I remember that. This latest submission could be aimed to expand the company's existing plans for its space-based international system, which currently services over 2 million users. Amazing. Some industry experts suggest that the filing is an attempt by SpaceX to secure Spectrum and upgrade Starlink in the face of increasing competition. Where is this increasing competition? Because it sure isn't from Bezos with his two satellites that he has now in orbit. Where is this increasing competition? OneWeb? By expanding into untapped frequency bands such as 23 gigahertz to 174.5 gigahertz range mentioned by the submission, SpaceX could enhance the capacity and efficiency of its network. Tim Farrar, a consultant of the satellite communication industry, explains that the larger antennas and additional user beams on SpaceX Starlink satellites necessitate the need for increased data handling capabilities. The frequencies outlined in the filing could potentially augment the gateway links and carry more traffic. Gateway links. We'll get into that also in just a second. This is expected to happen after SpaceX integrates its slightly lower E-band frequency between 70 and 80 gigahertz into the Starlink system. The regulatory filing coincides with SpaceX's development of Star Shield, a satellite internet system that leverages the technology that's behind Starlink to provide communications for national defense purposes. The U.S. Armed Forces recently awarded SpaceX's Star Shield program with a contract to power military communications. In summary, SpaceX's new regulatory filing for 29,888 satellites aims to secure additional radio spectrum to upgrade Starlink's network. While the exact purpose of the filing is unclear, it is speculated that it relates to expanding the capacity and efficiency of the system. This filing comes alongside SpaceX's development of Star Shield, a satellite internet system for national defense purposes, further emphasizing the company's commitment to advanced communications technology. So I think this is very interesting. I think that this is something that we should be aware of. What is going on? What are these frequencies? What frequencies do they currently have access to? What frequencies are they going to have access to now once this all comes to pass? What is it? So I think the easiest way is we jump over to the blackboard, right? Just to see what these frequencies are all about. So let me grab my pen and we'll just switch over to my screen, jump over to the blackboard and I'll give you a little bit more information hopefully kind of, uh, let's say, solidify things a little bit more for you. So here you go, guys. I know this is your favorite blackboard. Let's go ahead and put a satellite over here, as I always do, just so we know what's going on. And maybe down here, we will put, uh, this will be our dish, all right? We'll put the dish here. And then maybe over here, we will put the GS. This is the ground station. So let's go ahead and change our color to green. That looks good. The information that's going from our dish to the satellite is traversing on a frequency of 14.0 to 14.5 gigahertz. That is a capital H. That's 14.0 to 14.5 gigahertz. Now, the information that is coming from the GS up to the satellite is going on a frequency of 27.5 through 30 gigahertz, all right? That is the uplinks. Now the downlinks, let's go ahead and change that maybe over to, uh, we'll use like a pink. Now the information coming from the satellite down to our dish is coming through 10.7 through 12.7 gigahertz. While the information that's coming down from the satellite is coming across at 17.8 through 19.3 gigahertz. So you can see we have a bunch of spectrum that's already being used by Starlink. 
Let's go ahead and change this over to blue. That looks good. So as of 2018, they have authorization to use the X band between eight and 12 gigahertz. Now this is already, once again, authorized to them back in 2018. Now they also at that time were granted KU band between 12 and 18 gigahertz, as well as the KA band between 27 and 40 gigahertz, and now the V band between 40 and 75. Sometimes people will see that as 80 gigahertz. So that is what they currently have authority to use. So as you can see, there is a lot of spectrum already provided to SpaceX, but now they've put in that filing to say, listen, we need more. How much more? <laughs> a bunch more. Enough to facilitate 30,000 satellites, 29,888 to be exact. And that frequency or that bandwidth will be between 123 gigahertz and 174.5 gigahertz. So that's a nice little area of spectrum that they are requesting from the ITU. So does this all go through or does it not? I'm gonna say it probably will. As long as no one else is using that spectrum and they requested it, they should be able to get it without any problem. And if that is the case, what happens here? Once again, now let's have this discussion, right? Down below in the comments, let's talk about this. Is things going to change between the ground station and the satellites? Maybe they're gonna start using that spectrum. Or will there be a frequency change in the spectrum that's being used by our dish? Maybe the new dish that our going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks, I would say. The smaller dish, the mini, and then finally the larger one, which will be their corporate or business class dish. There is a new one or two new ones coming out. Will they be using this new higher frequency? It's possible. Remember, the higher the frequency, the more data that you can put into it. The lower the frequency, the further it can go, the easier it is to pass through objects, but not as much data can be assimilated with it. Higher frequency is usually faster speeds, lower frequency is slower speeds, but it has longer distance. And like I said, it's easier to go through obstructions or obstacles. So this is a higher frequency. So instead of using, like we were saying here on my drawing, using that up and down link between 10 and 14 gigahertz, maybe they start using the spectrum up at the 123 plus gigahertz, up to 174 gigahertz for our terminals. I really don't know. Or is this frequency more likely to be used by the military, the armed forces with Star Shield? Is that a possibility? The Star Shield program did get a massive contract from the US government. So is that what this frequency is all about? I really don't know. Obviously we're just speculating here, but what we do know is there is a new block of spectrum, a new block of frequency that SpaceX is going to get. And that block of frequency or that block of spectrum is 123 gigahertz through 174.5 gigahertz. Very interesting. And like I said before, they already have a lot available to them. Maybe they are making a forward play to maybe push out some of the competition that might arise in the next three or four years and make sure they get enough spectrum to be able to meet the needs of their, let's say in totality, 42,000 satellites that they want in their mega constellation. Elon Musk is a smart businessman. That is a possibility also. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Let's have this conversation down below. I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think? And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.